And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris and I am bringing it to you here from a lovely Westlake Village, California. It is bright, it's beautiful, and it is 5.30 a.m. We are about to get the housing economic data coming in right now. So we'll take a look at how that's going to affect the dollar, Bitcoin, and wow. Bullish for the dollar. Uh, it's the expectation versus the reality. The expectation was 1.4 million housing starts, 1.42 million building permits, and we missed on both to the upside. That's going to be bullish for the dollar, bearish for risk assets, and the NASDAQ's already down, <coughs> S&P's down, and the Dow is pretty flat right now. <coughs> Tether dominance popping up. You can see uh, news is not being taken lightly so far so good uh with the move to the upside on the dollar you can see how quickly the reaction happens real time on the five minute chart and we are just hanging out in the uh B <laughs> the box of peace and prosperity we talked about on the daily time frame which is the not 0.5 in the 618 zone from the uh <coughs> the prior low To, pr to prior high. So that's the 0.5 and the 618 coming in right there. And the next target is basically a bounce off the 618 back to the 236, which is this red line right here. That should in general put some pressure on the risk assets. And really play along with the theory that uh, from yesterday, the four hour range we talked about, got a perfect break, not, not necessarily a perfect break, uh, but the four hour range from yesterday was like this. To the upside and to the downside, using those wicks typically works good. In this case, a candle body closure above the range high was good enough and you can see it kind of the move happened all in one kick and uh well now we are did we close a hair above yes we did we got a four hour closure above this wick which would give me the bias that we are going to come up and test this trend line However, biases don't always work out. And uh, if the dollar does continue to rip higher here off of this housing data, which, uh, you know, to be fair, the, broke, the dollar broke down pretty good. And um, we got low volatility right now, about to flip back to the downside below 102.50. For the dollar, uh, so it's, it's literally got a lift off right now or it's going to come back down. And the next major point of contention on the four hours is going to be that green 55 back on the Bitcoin. Uh, so four hour is up as long as we're above 26.690. So, I mean, to be fair, we're pretty much still caught in the same range from yesterday. And uh, right now, momentum is to the upside on the daily on the four hour we are up. Let's see what the hourly says. Hourly is down. <coughs> and do we have any hidden bearish divergence? So when price is making higher highs, but the RSI is making lower highs, and I am willing to bet this is going to be our point of contention right here. So nice slew of hidden bearish divergence. So you got lower highs coming in here and higher highs here. One, two, three, three drive variety should get you a shot down to the green 55. How would we confirm this as a local high? Well, we'd need to see an hourly closure back below this pivot right here at 26,817. That'd be good enough to do it for me on that one if we are looking for a little bit of a downside move. Declining volatility, the 15 minute time frame probably has the same not exactly the same setup, but uh, close enough is close enough in this case. So, yeah, back on to the kind of main thesis is we run back up to this trend line, give it a test and one more push down. Uh, it's not, I, you know, do I think it's going to break today or tomorrow? 
No, we have not gotten the three day volatility uh, lift off. So when this thing gets above 25%, I will say that um, that is going to get the next move pointed in the direction of the stochastic, which is currently crossed up as long as we are above 25,383. So, oh yeah, wanted to point this one out here. Uh, you got the bullish engulfing on the three day, uh, the five day as well, uh, implying some immediate continuations. Um, that's looking good for a bounce. If you throw on this Gaussian channel here, I wanna see what it looks like. On the five day, getting a nice bounce off the green 55, off the top side of the Gaussian channel. That is looking good. We're flipping green on the weekly time frame. We got a test of the mean band and perhaps gonna put in another higher low. In fact, we did on the five day time frame. So all we wanna do is see this week come around and close back above here, above 27,000, that would look good for the impetus of the beginnings of a higher low uh, but better yet on the daily time frame what have we been saying over and over and over we want to see a daily closure back above 28,000 in order to kind of re-get our bull goggles back on and uh, right now we're going to assume with the trend uh, what do you see here you see a slew of lower high excuse me lower low lower high lower low <laughs> lower low, lower high, and continuations. So this is where you would expect the continuation off the green 55 if we are gonna get a push to the south side. Um, volatility is not quite below that 25 percentile, but sometimes close enough is close enough, even for a short-term pullback on the four-hour time frame. You're gonna have bearish divergence coming back from, nope, it'll be this pivot right here, which is the $28,000 level. So that's gonna be a critical area to contend for. Interesting to see where everybody's stops are gonna be. Um, that is where the price tends to go, is where the liquidity is, where everybody puts their stop losses, their trigger orders. Uh, right now you're still paying to go long, <clears throat> uh, Crypt Courses, join our uh, TA for free before the course on grip, growing your crypto wealth uh, before we just raise the price. Want to get a few people in here free, uh, so there is a link in the description below. Um, if you have any questions there, feel free to reach out. Back into economic data. No, I wanted to look at um, open interest coming in at 8.8, .8, so taking a leg up. As the price is going up, so that's looking good there. Fear and greed index coming in at a neutral. And what do we got on the altcoins today on the hourly? Uh, bit of a mix on the day. It looks like mostly red. Stacks leading the pack up 11%. And that's what I was going to mention. A few altcoins I just had on the radar here. Uh, stacks being one of them. Um, looks a bit stronger from an hourly breakout perspective on this one you can see we uh, regained the purple 200 exponential moving average the green 55 we got all the uh, lower periods crossed up above the higher period so that's a 200 a green 55 a 21 and a nine exponential moving average making a higher low on the purple 200 and getting continuation from there. Typically a bullish sign. So if Bitcoin does pump, I would expect stacks uh, to do well. Another one looking good on the charts uh, as far as an altcoin, SUI. Uh, this one, same exact picture. And then you've got uh, Aptos. Aptos also looking bullish, so I'd expect the stronger altcoins to benefit, uh, benefit if Bitcoin is going to break out to the upside and oh, well, to the downside. If we get that downside leg, then uh, it's all bets are off for uh, for altcoins. <laughs>
other than that, um, we got the hawkish pause. We got the BlackRock thing going on in the background. We've got Celsius selling some altcoins. We got the Coinbase li lawsuit, the Binance lawsuit. All things, uh, all things said, you know, Bitcoin holding itself up um, at this level is is you know showing a bit of strength at the moment. Um, as we said, Dixie likely to take a little bit more of a bounce, so putting some pressure on stocks and uh, Bitcoin. Again, NASDAQ pulling back from the target, the 786. We thought it was going to pull back at the 618. And uh, I heard some really interesting news yesterday or just predictions from some guy talking about, you know, $30,000 NASDAQ and $7,000 S&P 500 and the Fed just going to having unlimited money printing controls. Boy, that would be absolutely crazy for the markets um, for Bitcoin and would play, uh, you know, in favor of the bulls. Well, was that Gala? No. Mana? What what coin? Oh, that was that was stacks looking strong again, looking looking very, very strong. And is it going to break that daily downtrend? Did we already break it is the question. Let's say we had it drawn out from. See, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't work. We haven't broken the daily downtrend. We're still making a lower high here. And, uh, you know, we'll have a chance uh, to do it today, to be fair. So let's see if we draw this with candle bodies. It's any better. Could you call that a deviation and a back above? Well, yeah, you need to close back above this wick to get extremely, not extremely bullish, but a lot more bullish. Um, otherwise, this could just pull back off the green 55 and the silver cross, the silver cross. All right, I think that's it out of me today, guys. Uh, oh, checking in on Ethereum, still looking weak uh, in general on the daily time frame. It was not able to regain the purple 200 on the hourly no i take that back we're just slightly above it not holding it on the hourly momentum is to the downside and yeah if we do confirm this as a local high closing anywhere here or lower at 1727 i look at a run back at the bottom side of the range for the hourly on mr ethereum let's see uh I don't know why that chart is stuck. ETH Bitcoin coming down and Bitcoin dominance. Thought I'd bring it up. I saw Benjamin Cowan and a lot of guys making predictions on Bitcoin dominance taking a major leg up. And what did we say when we got the monthly close off the double bottom here? Our target on Bitcoin dominance is, yeah, up there at about 53 cents and uh, a greater target all the way up to uh, this white line. Uh, yeah, the 63% range, that um, that could happen. Yes, it could. All right, that's it out of me. And you would expect as Bitcoin dominance goes up to that Bitcoin outperforms altcoins. And um, that's just one of those underlying fundamentals that you should understand. And... VIX, VIX is bouncing off this box of peace and prosperity. Can it get a bounce and send the stock market back down? Uh, still needs to come back down. VIX uh, been caught right there. Was not a normal date of trading yesterday. I think it was a half day because of the holiday. So we'll see what happens today. It is still 545 and markets have not officially opened yet. Gold is coming in here too. Uh, coming in here too. What do we talk about? Well, as the dollar goes up, gold typically uh, typically goes down, and I would not be surprised if we test this bottom side box one more time. Volatility is absolutely compressed on the daily, so gold getting ready for a move, and I hate to range play it here, but uh, let's see if we can get anything to give us a, a little bit quicker, more efficient bias. I mean, if you wanted to use candle body closures, it's going to be a closure above there. Or below here uh, kind of gets the next outside range right and then you know above or below this wick here I would say and uh, I still think likely more likely than not uh, 
we get a bounce here first before a major rejection, but where would a major rejection come in? If we start closing back below this box of peace and prosperity for gold, uh, this would be on the weekly time frame, a more macro outlook, and it would be this this area right here. But right now we're in a weekly uptrend, higher highs, and the question is, where does the higher low come in? And why do we watch gold? Gold is, you know, Bitcoin is digital gold. Digital gold. And often does play in correlation with the gold price as it is a hedge against risk assets. Gold performed well when the banks failed. Bitcoin performed well when the banks failed. Would not mind a nice little tag into the green 55 there for a bounce. If the dollar does rip to the upside, you know, what kind of a move we talking about? Uh, well, that's all the way down to 1876. So gold had a massive rally off the weekly lows going back to October 2022. And also note, you know, uh, Bitcoin rallied uh, into Jan, you know, into uh, December of 2022. And needless to say, uh, at this point, gold looks like uh, a little bit of a droop first. You know, what would be more bullish, in fact, is if we did come down to the green 55. Uh, all the way down here at uh, 1875, puts in a higher low on the weekly time frame, and then gets bullish. That seems a little bit more likely because if you put in a higher low right here and then you reject uh, and come back down, that would be bearish and have a bit of a shift in trend, and you wouldn't want to see that. So if you are bullish for gold, you want to see a, a little bit lower I'd say first. And where's the measure move come down to? The measure move on this one at 1921. So definitely in the cards there on gold. All right. I think we covered it all today. Uh, we did not look at the euro coming down, GPY, uh, British pound coming down, Japanese yen popping up, and CNY coming down. And we'll see if our theory plays out, that if this is a harbinger of death and despair as the CNY goes down, it sometimes precedes a stock market crash. Uh, definitely hasn't over the past couple of weeks. And all right, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. I'll be back tomorrow with some more Bitcoin updates. Have yourself a blessed day. Take care.